Good morning, Internet. It's October 2nd. I am Michael, and welcome to Recording in Progress. And I'm here today to talk about socks. Now, socks are something that a lot of people don't even think of. Some people think of them as just an item you have around the house or something that just gets lost in the dryer. And yet, I've been thinking more and more about this. Let me explain. So, I regularly commute to Livermore in Pleasanton. Uh, they're very close in location, if you don't know. For I do this for school. I do it to get an education so I can get my art degree and eventually become a producer. But while I was in the area, I didn't have a job, so I decided to look for one, as you know. And I walked into a Starbucks, and I got the job. In fact, I went today to actually confirm whether or not the background check came back good and everything, and whether or not uh, that means I have the position or not. And they're like, yes, you are indeed a partner. It's just the manager happens to be out today uh, at a regional conference or something. And they just told me that she would call me tomorrow or the next day whenever she gets some free time. And I told them, no no worries, it's, it's nothing. People are busy. I'm busy. Everyone has their own things to do. And I'm fine with just chilling and waiting until they get a chance to ring me up on the phone. But while I got the job and everything, before that, I actually went out and bought some Starbucks apparel. I didn't buy a lot. I just bought like a week's worth because I figured, if not, I don't get the job. I have these clothes that are really nice. I haven't bought clothes in like four years. But I ended up buying pretty much a whole like wardrobe. I bought almost everything. I bought shoes. I bought shirts. I bought a whole lot of stuff. I bought long sleeve. I got polos mainly because they're... Uh, comfortable, they're short sleeve, and they, they have a collar, so like it works out really well. But then I went to buy socks, and they—I don't know if these—if if I'm just a cheap person or like eight dollars for three socks, it just seemed a little bit expensive. But they're very comfortable. Like these are supposed to be dress socks, I suppose. But they're incredibly comfortable. Like I—it's for the first time in my life I actually don't feel like ripping off my socks the minute I get home because they're the right size, they're very comfortable material. Then I got to thinking, what about when I was a kid? When Remember that whole thing of like, oh, dang it, they got me socks again, like when you're a kid? I can imagine, as a now grown person, like, you know how awesome that would be to get socks that are really nice and comfortable? But as a kid, you would just be like, oh, these, these people, they just, they got me the stuff I don't even like. But, like, socks are comfortable. Like, very comfortable. I, I enjoy wearing these now. And it's just got me to thinking about how people change over time and how I feel like we all become our own doppelgangers. You ever hear about that whole speech from How I Met Your Mother? Ted basically explains, We spent all this time looking for the doppelgangers, but over time we become our own doppelgangers. Basically saying that we were not... We are not now the people that we once was, and it was this entire episode. Uh... I believe it was like, I don't know, there's so many seasons, I, I, I kind of lose track, they all kind of blend together, but it's one of the cool things about the show that I've actually been looking for in other shows, like this really good narrative. Like, yes, I understand the entire premise of the show is this guy is telling his story to his kids about how he became the person that he wanted to be so that when he did meet their mother, he would do right by her. And he did, for the most part. I mean, she died, but... He, in and of himself, he wasn't a bad guy. He was a pretty stand-up person by the time he got to, you know, meet her. I mean, yes, he had a lot of sexual escapades with numerous women. And the entire thing comes back to, oh, they just weren't the right girls for me. But I, I tend, to, over time, to more and more agree with Marshall. If you wanted to meet the woman that you'd spend the rest of your life with, you would be looking for that person and only stop and only date and only pursue women who fit a certain criteria and he thinks he does in the first seasons or so and he thinks that girl's Robin and he gets really infatuated by her but referring back to a different you know series like and not even a series it's just a, a one-off movie by John Green it was not originally intended to be a movie but it ended up being a movie it's called Paper Towns basically one of the points that it drives home is that people get lost infatuating on a person that they just they ended up they end up trying to fall in love with this idealized person that they simply aren't 
and and due to this romanticization that Ted Mosby actually goes through in this entirely separate show that has nothing to do with Paper Towns, he ends up absolutely in love with Robin. But there, and, and, and even though in the show he ends up with Robin, it just, I don't know, it just seems really uncomfortable. I do not think for a minute that Robin was as into Ted as he was into her. It's just, it's just almost a little unsettling to me when he ends up with her. It's like, yes, I get you had this really cool connection, and yes, you spent a lot of your 20s and 30s with her. But it's, even in the show, they refer to her as, but it's Robin. I just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right. I'm a bigger fan of the alternate ending that's official. Uh, one of the other endings for the show was that he just ends up with their mother, Barney never divorces Robin, and then Marshall and Lily... I believe they're just Marshall and Lily and they have a kid or something. But anyway, that's just my feelings on the show. Yeah. Oh, I'm just, I just can't wait for the microphone to come. I'm sorry. Everything, I'm just trying to physically distract myself. I just keep trying to mentally distract myself from the fact that I can't have my microphone yet. It's coming. It's on the way here. But due to the way USPS tracks it, it just, it doesn't give me enough information. I just kind of want to know where it's at in the route, you know? Like, you know when you're on the way to a place, you know where you are. You know your location in relation to the place that you want to go. But FedEx tracking is like, oh, it's on its way. Yeah, it left five days ago, but it's on its way. It's just, uh, it just, I don't know. I'm just a very impatient person that really wants to get my hands on this new equipment to try out for the, for the channel. I don't know.